Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel, the stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. The assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and with me is David Kirkpatrick. How you doing? Doing great. How are you doing? Doing good. We are going to talk about a good topic today. One near and dear to my heart, um, right? <laughs> but but uh, Benjamin Logan, we know a little bit about him, right? <laughs> yeah, he was one of those early guys, man. He was in the thick of things. That's right. And you know, we've uh, been talking a lot about frontiersmen, the early frontiersmen, and you know, me being biased, Benjamin Logan is is n- my number one. He's up at the top. Um, I can understand some people like Herod and Boone better, or whatever, or Kenton even. But sure. if, I'm, if I'm pulling. I'm pulling, pulling my string or, or giving my vote. I'm going to vote for ben, Benjamin Logan, number one. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a haired guy, but there's there's plenty of good reason to put Logan at number one, as, as I'm, you know you're going to talk about later, but he was an impressive guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and just, a, you know, just a little fore, foreshadow or forethought here, because we're, we're going to talk about all this, and it's probably going to be multiple episodes of talking about Benjamin Logan, because... Um, yeah, well, I just want to talk about him for a while, and, I, and you know, the um, he can He's one of the first three, or, or first uh, founders of one of the forts. Fort Lo- Logan's Fort was uh, founded um, after Boone's Boonesboro and after Fort Herod. Uh, so, kind of a you know early early settler, one of the first people uh, uh, or settlers founders of Kentucky. I, w- I would give him that uh, distinction. So, there's one book or one biography written about Benjamin Logan, very in depth. Uh, very detailed, written by Charles Talbot. Um, it's very hard to get. Um, you know, you can get it at some libraries. Lincoln County Library has it. Um, they will not let you check it out, though, um, understandably so. Um, Harrods or Mercer County Library has it. There's a few others. I mean, a very scarce book, uh, to say the least. If you were looking for it, uh, to get it online, to order or buy it, good luck. Um, it's pretty much out of stock. I don't even know if it's, you know, who or if anybody is reprinting it, or I wouldn't even know who the first person to get to try to find and buy it, unless you just found it at a, a bookstore or thrift store, you know, in that sense. Uh, so kind of an obscure book, hard to get a hold of. Uh, but we went through, read it, combed it through, and we're gonna talk about Benjamin Logan and his life from beginning to end. So saddle up. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and and again, you know, one of the early settlers um, that settled Kentucky, but it all begins way back before Kentucky was ever even established um, with a fella named David Logan. And David Logan, his family, came from Ireland and arrived in Philadelphia, like many, many people came. So we already get that Irish background. Um, very common, very uh, typical for Kentucky um, and so forth, or, or just, you know, if you want to just say common uh, colonist settlers, if you want to say that. Um, but from 1738 to 1742, David and Jane settled in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. Now, real quickly, got some interesting people coming from that Shenandoah Valley. You know That's right. <laughs> I think I know a few, yeah. <laughs> They came from there, right? Actually, right, the whole area there along the border. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, one interesting one that I, people may not know about, and I know about, I know about this just because I just recently have been reading about it, is Abraham Lincoln. His ancestors came from the Shenandoah Valley. His, uh, his grandfather, Abraham Lincoln. Well, was was there, and that's where that's where they moved. That was their place, I think, before they moved to Springfield. Oh, okay, so, okay. I, I think not, I think that's right. I know they were there at some point. That's not who I had in mind, but, that, but that's right. Who's yours, Boone? Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thinking about <laughs> moving into Virginia from. Yeah, yeah. Which, like, and then honestly, like you know, this would have. I'm trying to think, and of course, I'm putting myself on the spot, but I'm I'm pretty sure. This would have been like David Logan and Abraham Lincoln's grandfather would have probably been there almost right about the same time. Unless I'm getting my dates, I, I think Abraham Lincoln's grandpa was named was born in like 1730 or something like that. So pretty close. They could have very well yeah. been right there. And I mean, if, obviously, this is not a massively inhabited place. So, you know, they may not even known each other, but it's also not a lot of people. So they very well may have known each other, you know. Just uh, another tie in that backward connection. There you go. There you go. Um, anyway, in 1742, Jane and David have their fifth child and their second son, Benjamin Logan. Um, they're not sure on his, his exact birthday, uh, but his baptism record says May 1st, 1743. Um, so there you have it. Uh, you know, Typically... What, I, do you know how the baptism and stuff worked back then? I mean, that, was it that instant or? Church of England, I don't know at that point. Um, I don't think it was, I don't think it had to be instantaneous, but very soon after after birth. Yeah. I would think, you know, they would have to get a, a priest or somebody there in time and all that kind of stuff. And that could very well take a few days if you live in. You know, the back two weeks away from somebody, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so yeah, that'd be that'd be nice to know. That's one thing I, I never really, I've never really delved into that part of history of stuff of of, of those sorts of things. But anyway, uh, he was not very well formally educated. Uh, a quote about his education is: his mind was not only unadorn unadorned by science, but almost un. <laughs> unaided by letters <laughs> i like that it's very diplomatically put <laughs> yeah. so basically meaning he didn't like he didn't do no learning <laughs> oh but <it's much>, um <laughs> a book a funny uh, uh, one thing I, I didn't read in a book was uh <laughs> daniel boone said something very similar to that <laughs> about about benjamin Lone. is like you know he did he wasn't too educated but <laughs> But, you know, we talked about this with Herod and stuff, you know, having, living on the backwoods, being able to read didn't really matter. It was not a big deal. Uh, right. It, it wasn't a, a need to need to know basis. And, I mean, these guys were able to speak different languages, uh, you know, with different Native American tribes, so forth, you know, able to do a lot of stuff that I couldn't do now. And, you know, I can read and write, but I cannot cultivate a farm or you know raise crops and all that kind of stuff so different times. Yeah, if you need to show ownership of your property you know when they would lay out uh, tracts of land you notch the tree with your 
with your mm-hmm. sign or your symbol or maybe a letter. Uh, you know, if you had a hog that belonged to you, you notched its ear. So they had their own way of conveying information, and it just it wasn't the way we do it. Yep, yep, different times, and you know, it's all right. Um, so oftentimes, you know, you don't know much about a um, a, a person in history, so you kind of got to put the puzzles together, right? So we don't really know a lot about Logan's dad to say that. You know, we don't know as much, and, and un, un, understandably so. People may think, you know, why research Benjamin Logan? Well, you know, he was a founder of, you know, the second town, second oldest town in Kentucky, right. and he was one of the first settlers over here. So we all a good reason to, I guess, uh, research that person, find something else about him. Now, you go back a generation, does that David, you know, in, in a way, you know, people have to make a connection or an impact in history, I guess, you know, to kind of get that yeah. to go. So with his father, we're kind of more so thinking about how, you know, how can we get a picture of him? And, you know, you kind of got to put the, the puzzle together. And really the only thing out there about Logan's dad, David, um, he had a court order over a dispute about a debt of five pounds. Not so, much to go on. That's not much, not much. Um, but I mean, I don't know. He wanted his money, I guess. <laughs> uh, to get that back. Um, besides that, you know, we don't know much. Um, and that's kind of, that's a, a lot of people in history fall away because there's just not that connection. So, yeah, people will often say that about the frontier because really in the Shenandoah Valley, even at that point, you are, you are the frontier, you, you know, you're, you're the backwoods and writing things down was just not high on your list of priorities. I mean, you, you had to get the farm ready or you starved, uh, you know, or you were defending your home. And, uh, and you're right, it is hard to piece that together. But uh, with Ben Logan, his father you know, plays part of that foundational story the way a parent would, but he doesn't really have the long involved role that uh, you know, he might otherwise because he dies uh, when Benjamin's only 15. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, following that, uh, Ben has to make his way in the world. As you said, he's the second son. And uh, even if he had been the first son, he had a number of siblings ahead of him and a, and a mom to take care of. So uh, he joins the militia at uh, age 16 and serves as a captain uh, in 1764, which you know says a lot. You know, he's commanding a company of men. So um, he was a sergeant under uh, Henry uh, Bouquet during uh, some of the Indian fighting in the backwoods, which was particularly um, you know harsh. And when he came of age, uh, he does end up inheriting his father's lands, which he sells uh, and then shares the proceeds with the family. So, again, a lot of mouths to feed, and they just were not mm-hmm. uh, the opportunities maybe that others would have had. So, yeah, um, well, with that, too, like oftentimes, you know, you get those times where the oldest son or, you know, or, or whoever gets the land, they may not. They may not divide it up and, <laughs> equally and so forth. And I, you know, I bring this back to Abraham Lincoln, you know. His his father Thomas, whenever and we need we'll just have to do an episode about the Lincolns at some yeah. point. But you know, Mordecai is the oldest son and like he inherits all the land and does not you know Thomas and his younger brother have to pretty much you're on your own fend, fend for yourself. Um, right. So you know it does say a little bit about uh, Logan's characters saying you know as far as giving it out, not just hoarding it up. You know uh, what yeah. what part he gets and stuff. So but yeah. And, and you combine that with the military service. I mean, you're a leader from a young age because you're thinking about other people you know, in an age, like you said, when it was very common and very acceptable not to do that. Uh, again, one of the reasons I'm glad I don't live in the 1770s, I'm the youngest of three. So, you know, how that would have played, uh, uh. But, <laughs> but, you know, he did buy, he did keep some of the funds and he buys some tracts of lands over the next few years or so uh, in Augusta County, Virginia. Um, I think it's March of 1771, uh, he has a man named Henry Davis that binds himself to Logan for a year and 10 months, you know, to learn a trade. So uh, things are going well. That's a sign that, you know, he's progressing in society and he's making a living. And of course, as soon as you can afford it, especially in those times, you start a family. And so 1772, uh, Benjamin w- marries his wife Anne Montgomery and uh, purchases a land in the area that would become Fincastle County. And we've talked about this some before. Fincastle kind of started at the western parts of what we would say is Virginia today and stretched 
through all of Kentucky. So yeah. he's slowly moving westward. He, you know, he, he's beyond the Shenandoah now as that population creeps this way. Uh, he's not over the mountains, but he's pushing it. And, uh, you know, living in that climate, you know, with a young wife and a young family, uh, he's learning the, the ropes and uh, how to survive. So um, and speaking of ropes, he does experiment <laughs> with growing hemp in Virginia, uh, which is a popular crop. And he had something on the order of uh, over 1,500 pounds of hemp uh, that was sent to the governor. So, uh, you know, he was in charge of creating roads in the area. So he filled a lot of roles that uh, people in the community did. They're sort of the backbone uh, of society. You think of the George Washingtons and the Thomas Jeffersons, uh, and obviously they were a great influence on the towns around them. But, uh, you know, they're few and far between. But every county had this layer of, of leadership that really helped with things. And Logan is fitting comfortably into that uh, until Lord Dunmore's war. And uh, yeah, he's called on to step up again. And we talked about that, you know, some with Herod, some of these guys. It's not it, it's less of a war and more of a single battle. But yeah, they didn't know that at the time. You know, it, it's, it's culminating <laughs> at the Battle of Point Pleasant. And again, he serves uh, as a lieutenant and Captain uh, William Cook's company, and uh, it does very well. And, of course, that one battle is over in October 74, and things go back to normal and life resumes. So uh, Logan ends up having his first son, uh, David, on April 10th. Very good hey. name. I may say so <laughs> myself. Uh, yeah, and so life is kind of moving on for him at that point. But you're really beginning to see uh, some of those things that you always learn about in American history class that are coming to fruition. You've got non-importation and exportation, uh, and the non-consumption agreement, things like that that are approved by the Continental Congress uh, in their as they're or they're battling with some of those issues uh, with the British. Mm -hmm. I thought of that pretty well, didn't I? Um, yeah. They're going backwards and forwards, and uh, you know, so Ben Logan is. is signing and on with Continental Congress and fully on the side of liberty. And uh, it's a good thing because they're going to need him down the road when he makes his way into Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's you know, pretty good as far as setting everything up to what's, what basically what's going to happen is, is, you know, Logan coming to Kentucky and on top of all that, the revolutionary war and all, all those sorts of things. Um, so, you know, a real quick, um, I guess timeline. I'll, I'll go through this just just to kind of set the stage of you know how things are all kind of um, where Benjamin Logan fits and how these things all all kind of fit together. And which I mean, I, I, I honestly I don't think I've, we've ever went through this uh, as far as the podcast goes, as far as the timeline of people coming to Kentucky, uh, or and I should say European settlers coming to Kentucky and so forth. Uh, but you had Thomas Walker. I know we've mentioned him many times in 1750 uh, on the Cumberland. Come the Cumberland Gap, Cumberland River, all that good stuff. Um, then right. you had Christopher Gist in 1751, who came down the Ohio River. Uh, John Finley in 1753. Um, you know, Lord Dunmore's War happens and all that stuff. And um, uh, Finley talks to Boone and so forth. But Boone had been here in uh, 1767 down the Big Sandy. Uh, Finley and Boone had came in 69. Uh, James Knox in 1770, uh, and then you have James Herod in 1774, and then the Transylvania Company right on his heels with the Treaty of Sycamore Shores and Sh Shoals and all that stuff. So that kind of sets a lot of stuff up, um, and I mentioned some of those people because basically Lord Dunmore's war kind of was this gossip center for Kentucky. You know, all these right. people who had been to Kentucky, you know, Get, get companyed up with these other guys and so forth. Like, Man, this place in Kentucky, we got to get you get you know. I, I can just imagine you know, get land getting's good there. You know, oh, you yes. know everything's good. We got to go. Um, and I, you know, you could just imagine how the gossip goes. You know, like like the gossip at McDonald's in the morning. Yeah, uh, or Dairy Queen. Yeah, well, my favorite piece of gossip about that is someone you Kentucky was very fertile, but they may have. You know, embellished just a little because one guy said he'd been to Kentucky and left his walking stick outside leaning against a tree. And when he came back out the next morning, it had, it had sprouted because the ground was so fertile. You know, <laughs> probably not. Yeah. But he probably had a piece of land he was trying to sell. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, 
Logan got his info from James Knox, who was from the Holston. Yeah, so the Journey West, you know, that's a good overview, a good timeline, but, you know, it can be a little difficult to kind of explain. Uh, four people mentioned, mentioned this, you know, you got Logan, Henderson, John Floyd, John Todd, uh, all these people who's kind of going about moving to Kentucky, you know, all this, all, all this. Um, um, Logan ends up joining, joining Henderson at Powell's Valley. Uh, but he doesn't really like Henderson's plan and decides kind of to break away uh, to start his own settlement. And there's kind of a rumor that there was this quarrel between the two um, at the Hazel Patch, but not a lot of evidence to back it up. Um, but, you know, again, you know, Henderson, again, we, we, you know, he's, we've mentioned him plenty of times. He, you know, he had his agenda, I guess, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little biased against Henderson, you know, because of, of what I was the Harrisburg folks <laughs> later on. But with a lot of those people, you really do. It, it seems like there's some underlying current there. You know, Squire Boone moves out of Boonesboro for a while. The brother of, of Daniel Boone ends up in Harrisburg and places west. So you kind of get the impression that all is not well, you know, in, in terms of Richard Henderson's plan. Uh, but Logan gets out early on and, uh, you know, makes it to Kentucky in spring of 75. Um, he and, uh, Floyd and Todd are part of a group that uh, comes and, like you said, started on the Upper Holston, uh, which is the same place as Logan. So um, in Henderson's journal, it's obvious that he kind of thinks that John Floyd and John Todd are the leaders of, of the party that's moving westward. Uh, maybe he did. Uh, maybe that was a bit of a dig at Logan because of you know the argument that they had. But uh, <laughs> whatever it was, uh, it was very clear over time that Logan was the leader. So. Um, after they arrive, you know, Floyd heads to Boonesboro and talks with Henderson and uh, Henderson lays out a plan um, for the governing of the new colony. So which basically was four settlements, like you said earlier, uh, with a population of a, a whopping 300 souls, you know, give or take here and there. Uh, so you've got Boonesboro, you've got Harrodstown or Harrodsburg, uh, Boiling Springs, which is actually James Harrod's settlement. Um, so mm -hmm. it's between Harrodsburg and Danville. And St. Asaph's, um, which Ben Logan found. So, mm -hmm. um, so each settlement was to you know elect a representatives and, and send it to the convention that Henderson was holding. Henderson gave the impression of doing things very legally and, and, and very right. So he calls you know representatives from all of these settlements. Uh, they're going to make some common laws that could be shared among them. And I think what he's really trying to do is show people back east that he can run this thing efficiently and, and, and legally, but it, it backfires on him. So, uh, yeah. but it's and, interesting. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. But it's interesting when they get there, you know, the representatives from uh, St. Asaph's uh, Logan's not among them, you know, so it's a claim of doubt on his leadership, I suppose, you know, all that ties back to the hazel patch that you mentioned earlier and that, that quarrel they had. Something happened. Something, somebody's yeah. quarreling about something. <laughs> Uh, the, um, so yeah, and that that's it. while I was reading this book, I, I did find it very interesting because it did kind of give out some more of like uh, Henderson's plans, uh, and I'm sure they're out there and more, and I've just not um, really sought it. But basically, you had an executive branch, uh, you had a kind of a three housed assembly, uh, the lowest house elected by the people, the middle house. Um, would have been 12 members, all landowners, and then the upper house would be the proprietors. Basically, though, the upper house could just kill any law that the lower house made. Like, it wasn't even, you know, they could just, you know, exit out, which basically means, like, you know, the people really have no voice at all, you know? <laughs> if, right. If, you know, the lower house is being elected, pretty much the upper house can just kill any bills that, uh, or anything that uh, the lower house presents you have no representation, you know. And you can imagine how that goes over even worse when the revolution starts, because that's what the king does. Yeah, you can have <laughs> yeah. your assemblies if you want, but I can dismiss them whenever I want. So, you know, aligning yourself with his policy is not a good idea in 1776. Yeah, not, yeah, not good at all. But that, that was something that when I was reading, you know, because the book does talk a little bit more about it and stuff, and I was like, now that's, that's, I can see why people didn't really want to go with Henderson, if that was what he was planning. Um, but, Anyway, Floyd uh, surveyed uh, 200 acres for Logan, and Logan headed back to the Holstein. 
which is his home place there in Virginia um, and so forth. But on their way, they, they stop at Boonesboro, where many people are leaving. Uh, Logan sells his 309-acre uh, farm. Uh, <clears throat> that's, that's his farm at the, uh, in Virginia, not, not, not in Kentucky. Uh, right. Logan brought his family to Kentucky in February of 1776 uh, with the wife, with his wife, uh, Jane, and their child, David, uh, Benjamin Pettit, and his wife and their children, and Logan's slave, Molly, and her three sons, which their names were Matt, Dave, and Isaac. Um, upon that, I think that is the only knowledge that I know or of that of Benjamin Logan having slaves is is those those right there. Um, mm. uh, I don't know how long that lasted or anything like that. Um, at least I haven't got that far in the book. Uh, so, um, but it's out there. That's that's just the truth of it. Um, upon their arrival, the Pettits built a cabin uh, about ten miles from Logan's. Um, they would take turns one week. Uh, they would be working on, at the Pettits, and then the next week they would go to Logan's, and they would work there. Um, their cabins only had a sheet for a door. So if you can imagine, you know, uh, cold night, warm night, you're going to get it one way or the other. Uh, yeah. you, you didn't get no choices. Um, and, and to think that was on the frontier, you know, nobody around, um, you know, uh, Native Americans attacking and stuff, they could just walk in. Um uh, not a lot of defense, but again, they they're kind of working together, back and forth, back and forth, one one after the other, um, and eventually, uh, you know, they would uh, get them built. Uh, Logan would kill an animal, deer, bear, buffalo, uh, whatever it may be, about fifty yards from his cabin, uh, which is pretty impressive. Not on his, you know, ability to kill an animal, <laughs> but there were that many animals around that he would just, you know. <laughs> Oh, God yeah. damn it, guys. <laughs> uh, and pretty laid back. You would think the smoke, the wood smoke or something would drive them away. But I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, a laid back yeah. buffalo. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Logan marked land for his brother. Uh, and then William Whitley was also building two miles from uh, what would become uh, Crab Orchard as well uh, this whole time. But two miles, you know, I, that, I, that, I said two miles. I don't Crab Orchard and Stanford are about ten miles apart, so maybe it was his, his maybe maybe his station that would probably be it's more okay. accurate his his station because he lived in because uh, Willie lived in the fort for uh, a time as well. Um, Henderson's colony though, uh, back on that end of things, was pretty much dead in the water. Uh, settlers were already kind of seeking protection from uh, the count the colony of Virginia, and um, so you know. That kind of leads us back there. This is Logan's kind of setting up his stuff, and uh, uh, you know, they're Henderson just not working out. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, so many people are um, are fleeing Kentucky uh, as you know, following the uh, the Lord Dunmore's War in 1774. So Logan is not; he sells his farm in Virginia, but a lot of people are making that trip going back the other way. And the you know, the forts being built at this time again, you've got Boonesboro, you've got Harrodsburg. You got Royal Springs, which is modern day Georgetown in a sense. It's right around that area in Scott County uh, on the Elkhorn. Uh, you know, and during this time, Whitley and Clark and some of the others from Crab Orchard um, stopped by Logan Station. And uh, he, understanding the need for manpower, tries to you know, rope them in and convince them that uh, they need to build St. Asaph's, the fort there. And uh, it's debated for a little bit. And they end up going on to Harrodsburg and Logan goes with them for the time being. Um, he never quite loses that vision for the fort, but things were really beginning to heat up and there was strength in numbers. So um, while at Harrodsburg during the winter, Logan would go back and forth between building his fort, just as he had with his neighbor, and uh, you know back to Harrodsburg in that area. So uh, with the help of people who would eventually move there with him, and uh, while he's there, though, he does take time off building for one very significant uh, part of the revolution, at least if you're in Kentucky. We talked about this a little bit in the Herod episode, uh, but there is a drastic need for powder and mm -hmm. gunpowder. And uh, things are not going well. Finally, George Rogers Clark's in Virginia. He gets some powder sent, in theory, to Kentucky. But the letter to Herod 
does not arrive. So there's no transportation there to bring it down to Kentucky. And uh, they end up, you know, breaking it into smaller um, shipments, kind of hiding it there in the wilderness and sending back for help. And so Herod and Logan go on this mission uh, to get the powder and the lead and they're successful, uh, but it takes uh, 20 days. So, you know, they're at a very dangerous uh, point in their life. But again, Logan's willingness to help others ultimately saves Harrodsburg and his self and his family. Mm -hmm. We're going to stop right here with our discussion about Benjamin Logan. We again want to thank David for joining us and add into the discussion and we'll continue next week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel the stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in Western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. The assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. We're always seeking to find more Kentucky history so we can bring it to you. The viewers, the listeners, we want all the stories and all the events from Kentucky's great history to be told and shared everywhere.